Selamat siang, good afternoon. I'm not talking about serious things. I'm talking about things that we use every day. I hope it is interesting. Next. Four nineties, I believe, if you see the picture, I believe you, most of you, experience this. When I was in the 1990s, I communicate with my colleagues, with my friends, by what we call now conventional mail. At the time, we call mail or surat. And then we have to, I have to go to the post office, buy stamps, and then stick the stamps on the envelope, send it, and then the following days, the following weeks, I have to wait for the postman. Ada yang mengalami hal itu juga, saya kira semua mengalami hal itu. We experience the same thing. And then at a time, when I hear the motorcycle, and then I know it is the postman, I will open the gate and then wait impatiently. Ah, there will be a letter for me. This is the memory of mind and also some of you. After 90s, we have this gadget. And then we know from the big one until the small one, this gadget reduce the way we communicate with each other. And then this also produce terms, jargon and language. Before, when we send letters, conventional letters, I believe when we send letters to uh, our parents, at the bottom of the paper we say, Sembah Sujud Ananda, atau Dengan Cinta. Now, when we have this kind of tools, we don't use that kinds of expression anymore. Kita tidak pernah lagi menggunakan ketika mengirim SMS ke Ibu kita misalnya, when we send a WhatsApp message to our parents, we never say sembah sujud ananda. Never. I believe. And also, these gadgets also produce new language, such as handphone. Handphone is English, but it is not in English. But it, it, is, it is not English. Handphone. Namanya saja handphone, tapi... Bukan bahasa Inggris. When you go to UK, for example, I want to buy handphone. What handphone? And then also uh, SMS. Also ping, BlackBerry. Inilah ada ada kata baru. Ada ping, ada TTYL, ada Jomlo. It is said that the development of modern digital technology first produced new words. The second is reinvent. The second is shift the meaning of words. Yang pertama tadi, we call it, the new one is called neologism in linguistic. The second one is, for example, kata jomlo or jomlo. Those who were born in 1970-something, when you hear, when you were a child, for example, when I was a child, when someone say the word jomlo, it is a very taboo word. Is that correct? See, itu tu jomlo. That will be a third war. Jadi ada perang dunia, third world war. Pasti akan ada perang dunia. It is very, very rude word, jomlo. Jomlo means someone who has, who has reached some certain age, but has not got married. So when we call someone jomlo, she or he will be very, very angry. And now, the meaning has been shifting, berubah sekarang. Jomlo means, due to modern social media, the word jomlo has been shifting. Maknanya, it is more natural. The meaning is more natural. For example, this is the title of uh, news from Liputan 6. 
Neymar kembali jomblo. Or when your daughter, your uh, your uh, that, uh, your children, for example, mah aku lagi jomblo nih. Jomblo means tidak punya pacar. They don't have girlfriend or boyfriend. The meaning uh, has been shifting. Do as long as I know it, due to the social media. In in, in English. There are new in, newly invented expression, as before said, OTW, O T W, on the way, T B H, to be honest. Semua disingkat in abbreviation, disingkat. So, in Indonesia, as far as my experience and my observation, we tend to adopt. We Indonesians tend to adopt the expression in English, written in English. So, for example, this is how we read. This is conversation between two person. Lagi di mana? OTW. OTW ke mana? Ke hatimu. Lalu, lol. Cius, tempat, et, t, tanda, angka empat, biasa. CPA, capa aja. Diri, nah, titik titik, GW ke situ kayak pakai kayaknya tulisannya, spellingnya K X titik titik, lalu ada CU. Menurut pengamatan saya bahwa bahasa sosial media dalam bahasa Indonesia cenderung mengadopsi bahasa atau ekspresi yang digunakan dalam bahasa Inggris, tetapi ada istilah-istilah baru yang menurut Sukmawati yang saya baca itu disebut dengan bahasa alay. Bahasa alay, bahasa alay misalnya cius, capa, kayaknya. Jadi, it can be said that social media has significantly changed the way we communicate and it produces new words and new expression. This is the plus and the minus of social media, the words in social media. The plus is based on the acrylic themes, he said that make communication more effective and faster. Because you don't have to write on the way, you just type O T W. The main, the minus one, as mentioned by Abati, is that social media brings bad effect on young people's writing skill. This is the big questions. What is our responsibility? I am an online tutor for translation, some translation subjects. And I do feel, and I mean, some of my students sent message without considering good in the, both English or Indonesian grammar. Or sometimes they say, Pak S Y Pak saya lupa karim tugas. Jadi disingkat-singkat. I believe these students. Things that they send message to their friends through social media. So this is our responsibility as lecturer, as those who concerns about language, to teach our youngster when they write in formal in a formal situation to obey the rule, either it is Indonesian. Or English. So, if we let this happen, I am afraid that our youngsters' writing skill will be like when they write social in social media. I think this is the end of my presentation. Once again, thank you very much. This is based on my observation, based on my readings, and based on my thoughts. Thank you. Terima kasih.